Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. Oh, we got a great show today, and it's all with somebody that's in the State House. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi everybody, it's Melinda Gallant, and I am with a wonderful person. She is brilliant, I think, and uh, she also, she has her pulse on the con her constituents here in Massachusetts. I am with State Senator Susan Moran. Hi Melinda, hello everyone, thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. Well, you're running for office again. I am. Yay. State Senator. State Senator. Going again for this will be your second term, right? It, it will. A second in a little bit because I came in on a special election. That's right. I forgot all about that. Yeah. And you're you you cover what area? Because I know the out the it always looks like it always to me it looks like a dead body when they start drawing the where people are. Oh, you know they're who you cover. You know. And mine's interesting because I span the canal. I've got towns on either side. Wow. And especially this year because we've added two with redistricting. So. On the Cape side, I have Falmouth Sandwich Born, and I'm adding Mashpee, which I'm thrilled about because I've been working with folks from Mashpee for years as a selectman mm -hmm. on clean water issues sure. and, and many other things. And then on the Plymouth side, I have Plymouth Kingston Pembroke, and I'm adding Plimpton, uh, wow. which is a really interesting, beautiful town. So it's I'm looking so forward old to that. Too. It's very historic. It really is. It really is. Nice little enclave. Yeah, nice. Well, it's kind of a broad range of issues, although I think the canal is kind of the connecting thing because there are a lot of issues around the canal too. I mean, the new bridges that will be coming, please, please, please. Right. And um, how that's all going to happen, I probably will never see them, but <laughs> well, they are coming. We And we're working hard on that, but you're right, I have ocean-facing communities, right. and so clean water is important, sure. accessibility is important, um, fishing uh, is, is important, I have cranberry uh, businesses, farms, right. uh, along with many, many kinds of um, tourism-based economic development issues. Oh, sure, sure. Well, and also, we have rising sea levels everywhere. So, uh, and, and we are experiencing it here definitely in Sandwich, as we all know. Uh, consequently, we're going to have a little bit higher boardwalk. Right. And um, hopefully it'll last a little longer. I know a lot of people have this, oh, I, I want the old boardwalk back, you know. And it doesn't make any sense to me. If you know it's going to wash out, why would you rebuild the same thing? That's like the definition of crazy. <laughs> it, it, it actually is. And I was just at a meeting uh, a little over a week ago with the town manager, Bud, and yeah. Heather Harper, the assistant, along with all of the other experts. And we were talking about the same thing because the town is doing a really great job at gathering resources mm -hmm. and also community input. And so they were talking about how they had to strike that balance where, mm -hmm. you know, and they're doing some really uh, important engineering shore up Mm -hmm. uh, technology, so that's one upside. Um, but certainly, I'm looking forward to bringing as many resources as I can to that project, along with other um, projects in Sandwich. Well, as you said, you have a lot of uh, coastal area to cover, both on the bay side and then on the other side as well. Right. Certainly, on the ocean side. And here's the thing, you know, that's all. That is revenue because you lose that ta those tax bases with houses disappearing it's not a good thing no a absolutely right and as we look toward the housing crisis and and the uh, fact that it's gotten uh, so expensive to to build and and the market is you know a third higher just about than than it has ever been you know we we have a lot of things that we're we're trying to um, be sure that uh, the community gets the needed resources it needs. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I know you're working on something really big, though, that has to do with families, and it has to do with children, and that's the common bill, which is, I thought, <laughs> when I looked it up, <clears throat> excuse me, when I looked it up, 
I thought, what a strange name. But I kind of got it after I kind of read through what it's about. Right. So why don't you explain that to me as if I were a five-year-old because I sometimes am. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, it, the Common Start Bill was born out of advocacy. And so that, to me, that's where I got the connection because I didn't name it. So the Common Start Bill proposes to fund childcare from age zero up to, depending on whether there are special uh, needs, uh, age mm -hmm. 15, it includes after school and it includes many supports for the industry of childcare, such as um, allowing subsidies for all of the slots that uh, of childcare that that whether it's a private or a community-based center needs to keep open, even though kids may come and go. And most importantly, it takes the um, the employees, the folks who. Are, have studied child care and who are working with our most important resources, our children, and it gives them a career path if they'd like to, to uh, advance their degrees, as well as if, um, you know, as they're starting, it's a livable wage that's built upon uh, what kindergarten teachers, for example, are paid. Mm -hmm. And so it recognizes, that, and they're probably, um, it's around 95% is the statistic. Wow. Uh, employed by women right. and as we look at where the pandemic has laid to bear all of the needs in our community what well, long and time impacted women the most exactly right and what women have a Hobson's choice right now to get back to work and in their career path has maybe stumbled a couple of years because they've been out for COVID and so this is has the reverberations of supporting W women, mothers, on their career paths mm -hmm. to contribute to their own families. And that's how communities stay vibrant. When you have families come into community, especially on the Cape where we tend to be a little older, <laughs> and you have, you know, folks that, that can have child care when the, you know, maybe one of the parents is a nurse, maybe a firefighter. We, we really have to look to um, being financially welcoming to young families, and this is um, the bill that really encompasses all of those things. So this is the bill you're trying to get through the State Senate? That's right. Now, are you a co-sponsor or are you the sponsor? I, I am a co-sponsor. I am the female Senate sponsor Yay. With, the, <laughs> with Senator Lewis. And what, the great thing about that is Senator Lewis has been working on this issue for a long time. And there is an early childhood uh, committee that I've been participating in over the last year that Senator Lewis, along with the House Chair, um, has run to, to do a few things. Bring not only advocates together, experts, people who have been in this business, mm -hmm. people who look at how complicated it is to get vouchers and subsidies and, and whether that works for families or whether one of the things the study came out with as a finding, we should look at a different model so that we're not basing it on child care in the most expensive way that it's uh, provided. We, we would look at it going forward, this study proposes, sure on real costs. Oh, and sense. so if the, you know, if the state is going to provide more foundational subsidies, which the, it proposes over five years, so this is not going to be, you right know, tomorrow. exactly. And it's going to lead up and make sense and shore up the entire industry moving forward. But don't you always look at real costs? Well, the state looks at cost models, their formulas, oh, and they're not always... But not everybody fits into a formula. That's true, and they don't <laughs> always ask the boots on the ground, right? Right, right. So that this, this allows more of a boots on the ground view of, of the formula, which will give us more real numbers, so we're not overspending taxpayers' money. Oh, that's wonderful. That sounds great. That's terrific. So what are the chances? I, I think the chances are excellent that pieces of the bill will move forward. Um, what happens, as you well know, in legislation is ideas get proposed and then people read in on it. I know. And I saw, you know, the, the uh, I am a bill 
um, when when my kids were little watching all those shows, you know, on PBS, I am a Bill and how it has to walk up the steps and how it gets exhausted because it gets so <laughs> torn apart. So I do remember that. So so tell us what would what do you think will stay and what do you or do you have any idea? Well, I I think that um, we were smart to have the committee of experts on sort of a parallel plane as the bill was moving ahead. And so that gives us, first of all, credibility that we've already put this out there to experts to read in. And as other senators um, look at the report and they ask their own questions, and, and of course the bill is in the House as well. Um, Rep. Peich is, has been in, incredibly um, influential and, and interested in, in other uh, senators and reps as well. And so as their constituency, their community members yeah. ask questions about you know, how this would work in their communities, we can incorporate those ideas. But we've already got a foundation. We've kicked the tires with this committee on lots and lots of ideas. So that gives us a, a, a very valid foundation to, to answer questions. Sure. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So what else do you have going on other than that little bill that means so much to the people of Massachusetts, and especially women? What else you've got going on? So we've been um, spending a lot of time um, on clean water, mm -hmm. um, looking at PFAS. As we know, it's been a concern in Barnstable County in particular. Mm -hmm. And so we're at the State House, we're trying to shore up the community uh, concerns as well. Uh, we've got uh, climate change um, issues that we're trying to really pivot toward electric and away sure. from the carbon-based fuels. Um, and that's, you know, it has a lot of tentacles. It affects building trades. And so as we're moving ahead and looking at making investments, we want to be sure that the public has a chance to uh, gradually gear up towards that. Um, we're looking at, uh, I've, I'm doing a lot of work on housing, uh, connecting so important. both, it's so fundamental. In fact, I was on the Cape Cod Women's Forum yesterday. I've been running a, a forum on the uh, Plymouth side of the community mm -hmm. for, um, and getting together builders, getting together municipal folks who are trying to manage various programs mm -hmm. and asking, how, do, how does the system work for you? How can we make it more efficient? How can we open it up more? Because we've got to make the system more efficient because we're dealing with higher costs. Well, here's the problem <clears throat> on the Cape. Um, and as you know, I worked for Mashpee Commons for 16 years. And um, I have nothing but admiration to, for Buff Chase. Just, that's, I, I know p there might be people out there going, oh, but he built this thing. Well, you're crazy. Because <laughs> it could have been a lot worse, and it could have been a, a enclosed shopping center. It could have been a Cape Cod mall, which there's nothing wrong with that. However, it is what it is. It's not beautiful. Boxes. Boxes. Yeah. Big boxes. Come. And it's not, because that wasn't his, his dream. So I, I understand housing. But the problem is, as I see it, is I'm part of that aging population, right? And um, sure, I want to stay in my home, okay? I want to age in my home. However, I'm going to have to have people come in. If the person coming in to help me can't find an apartment or a house somewhere in the Upper Cape, they're not going to drive from Provincetown to me. They might drive over the bridge from Plymouth or, or from Sandwich on the other side of the bridge, but there's nothing over there either. How are we going to get people to understand that we need affordable housing, that it's not ghetto, it's not bad people, uh, it's people who aren't making you know $150,000 a year usually. It's usually a lot less than that. And they are worker bees. They are people that do wonderful things in the community. So how do we educate our citizens? Because Sandwich is a perfect example, God love us, of people who, not in my backyard. Oh, well, we, yes, we need affordable housing, but oh, we don't want it in Sandwich. Uh, and our property values are you know, off the Richter scale right at the moment. So um, do you have a system for that? Do you have a, an idea for that? Do you worry about that? I don't know. I, I am optimistic because 
we have made progress because we've been working on this so diligently. Mm -hmm. The advocates, one of the things we realized is exactly what you said. People have preconceived notions from growing up in, um, in inner city, what, right. what do quote unquote projects look like. Right. So one of the things it's, the, it's our responsibility to do is to show people it's actually different now. We actually have, you know, and, and different models. We have um, models that are incredibly, you know, modern looking in a nice cape style. Mm -hmm. We have neighborhoods that have playgrounds where, where there is um, accessibility, walkability. They're in um, walkable areas where if you want to go get a newspaper, you can, you know, go a couple of blocks up. We were talking about Norman Rockwell. Uh, sure. Well, what's more Norman Rockwell than walking up the street, taking a, a, a CCRTA bus where right. it's incredibly clean. The, the person driving is uh, just very accommodating and welcoming sure. and you go to your dentist and first of all that's going to um, be carbon friendly because we're not all driving cars everywhere to right. spew you know the bad dust into the air and then breathe it it's healthier and that's what community is because at this point you know where you want to be you have a group of friends where you are you just maybe don't want the big house hassle and if you sell that big house Guess what? You have um, young families that might be coming into the community, sure. and, and isn't that great? But where are you going to move to? Right. You might want one floor. You might want to be, you know, within a, a certain area, neighborhood that you like. If we don't build housing for everyone, meaning, you know, people that want to downsize included, then what we're doing is that's who we're forcing off the Cape and we don't want to do that. Well, and we are forcing them off the Cape. Um, there's a lot of you know, openings uh, in various um, businesses um, because of no housing. And um, you know, my kids, whom you know, uh, run a small restaurant. And uh, for them to get help is very difficult. Now, they, you know, they've hired some people that are, you know, trying to bring themselves out of being in rehab and all of that, and, and which is great, it's wonderful. Um, and they've turned out to be really good employees. But because of COVID, so many things changed that they're almost back to square one in hiring. Um, what about um, foreign help coming over? Do we know where we are with that this year? So the Chamber of Commerce over the years mm -hmm. um, has been, you know, fairly straightforward about businesses are telling them that they don't have enough workforce here on the Cape, right. whether it's, and I, I worked at Brigham's when I was 16 years old. My kids, you know, started as soon as they could get working papers one place or another. It's not enough to support the tourism economy that we have. And so we do look to foreign workers. Uh, Bill Zammer, for example, oh, terrific friend, his soul. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. man. Actually, you know, had housing for folks that um, he would bring from Jamaica or otherwise, the, the J-1 visas, I think it's mm -hmm. called. Uh, Congressman Keating is working really hard on having that system work correctly. And of course, there's, um, there's a bill at the State House for driver's licenses because what happens is when we have so many foreign workers, um, folks, we want to be sure they're, you know, they may not be citizens, and certainly that's an important distinction, but we want to be sure everyone is safe driving and that if there is a problem that, you know, there's uh, insurance available and, and right. that kind of thing. Right. So, Well, and also, how do you get a job without a driver's license, usually, you know, or something along those lines? Um, I know that um, my kids have hired in the past a lot of Macedonians who are from the region that has a little bit been blown up. Um, uh, they've also, I think, also hired one Ukrainian, which was not last year but the year before, who came in for the summer. They all ride bicycles, which scared my son to death because they're riding bicycles down Route 28 and sometimes even hop on MacArthur Boulevard if they, you know, if they want to get there quick. Uh, 
on a bicycle, you go, oh my God, what are you thinking? But that's, that's their form of transportation. If they could have a driver's license or be able to have a car would be much better. It, exactly, and the, the county's done a good job in distributing um, safety vests and um, yeah. lights yes, and, and yep, that kind of thing yep. to really uh, support our workforce in, in that manner. Yes. Um, so Susan, you were part of something very exciting at Woods Hole Theater. Totally out of your wheel box. Totally. Big Not really, time. But big time. <laughs> you were a superstar with Troy Agins. You were unbelievable. Unbelievable. She, you read for le uh, Love Letters. You read the part and you did a fantastic job. You know, you were, you gave me some great direction along with Gary and, and Annie and, and it was um, so fun. To, to be in a different element with that support. And it just, it was emblematic to me. You know, we talk about our first responders. We talk about people who have been cloistered or, you know, have health concerns and, and COVID has really separated us. Mm -hmm. It really, you know, it, it, it brought to mind how important it is for us all to, to be in a, um, in, a community where you can, you know, have that, the, you know, have some fun, have yeah. some fun yeah. come back. Yeah. And so thanks, thanks for your, your part in that. Well, all I know is that you, you packed the house, which was great, it was wonderful. You did a wonderful job. We could all hear you. I have a big thing about not being able to be heard, but you're a, you're a person who speaks a lot, so you knew how to do that. We had a couple of others another night that didn't speak so loudly and I wanted to smack them. <laughs> well, it was your, you reminded me. So I was trying to project, as they <laughs> you say. You did, and you did. You did a great job. Um, and, uh, but the other thing was, you were part of a cultural event for a tiny little theater company, teeny tiny theater company. And you brought light to them, but how wonderful that you would take your time to be part of a cultural event. I mean, that's, that's my big thing is culture. Um, I don't think you, you live by bread alone. I think you have to have other things to stimulate your soul. So, oh, cultural tourism as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And it all brings in money. Exactly. It does to the state. And it's OPM a lot of times. It's other people's money when yep. you have, yep. you know, that support the community and they look forward to coming back to that. Yes, yeah, and I think this year is gonna be unbelievable. I do, I think the, um, it's, I think, from what I hear, I used to be on the board of the Cape Cod Chamber. I am no longer. Um, however, that said, I get little bits and pieces that uh, bookings for the summer are really way up. Oh, yes, I've heard yeah. the same. It's yeah. going to be busy. And, you know, folks that are here, I think, are going to have to stretch their tolerance a little bit more well, yeah, because, because it's so... It's so important for our, our restaurants, our retailers, our towns. I know, but I have to laugh because it's been two years since we've had a lot of traffic. So now we're going to have a lot of traffic, and I can already hear myself swearing in the car. Oh, I, <laughs> so. I, I must admit, I'm with you on that. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so what if, if you're going to leave everybody here with something, what would you, what would you say to them? What, what, what's the... What's, what's on your agenda? What's your big items on the, obviously the, the common bill? Right, um, there's a website, commonstartma.org, Common so you can start. find out more about that. Okay. But I am at core about economic development, getting us back on our feet in the many ways that we have to do that because that does help families. It helps families keep their expenses low. And we need to have, um, you know, inventors, and we've got, you know, we've got all the scientists on the Cape. We need to encourage people, you know, mass maritime, young people. There are opportunities right here. And the more that we're open to that, and one thing that COVID has done, it's, it's really shown us what, what's absolutely necessary and how to think out of the box. So I am focused on our uh, financial health moving forward along with our, um, our health in general. And, and you, now that um, Governor Baker is not running, is it a free-for-all up there yet? You know, <laughs> I say up there, you know, it's like right. really far away. <laughs> in Boston, it, it's, um, it, you know, 
I think with someone who's well known, Attorney General Maura Healy. Yeah, I who heard she's running. <laughs> she's running, and she's been um, a community um, sort of uh, friend to a lot of people in her job as Attorney General. She, in the sense that she's well known. Oh, she's, she's not just well been known. working on Beacon Hill. The last time I saw her in person, we were neck deep in a cranberry bog in the waders yeah and she had a rake and and the two of us were climbing up on the machinery which by the way in um in my role in in advocating for our cranberry farmers many of those machines are invented and made by the farmers because it's a small circle and they know what works right and so those are the kinds of things that um you know when you look at you want a governor who understands all of the issues sure. and certainly someone who has that experience in you know working for the state uh, carries a lot of weight so you know we'll see what happens it's early yeah. um, but uh, you know it's well she did have a lot of impact on women's safety mm -hmm. and women's health I think and, I and families you know Ab I really, absolutely really do. I think she had a lot of impact on and her. you know she's a tenacious uh, basketball player in the day yeah, and grow up in a big family yeah, so yeah. you know there are things that are intrinsic on that yeah that's great that's great and what about you personally Susan how do you have fun oh boy you know I love community work I have a great group of friends but I am most drawn to I've got three granddaughters ah, and ages I've got 10 6 and 17 months. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that uh, that certainly keeps me busy. Yeah, so do you ever get to babysit them? I, in fact, we're, um, we're planning on uh, the youngest one. Her parents are going to a, a wedding. Um, they have to take a, a plane. Uh -huh. And so I am thrilled to be able to... Um, take care of her? Exactly. Oh, how fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you'll have a good time. Yeah, for sure. I'm in my element. Yes, you are. Well, you're a delight to speak with. That's for gosh darn sure. And I think this, what's it called again? I want the full name. The Common Common Start M A dot org. Common Start M A dot org. Correct. Is a wonderful bill for families, and it's going to impact women amazingly, and it's going to help our kids. I mean. You know, it we, really education is. is where it's at. It's you know? an investment into the next generation right. and in the moment. Right. Melinda, you've been, you made this so conversational. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Well, I try. <laughs> anyway, so nice to see you, Susan. And come back and see me again, okay? I sure will. All right. Thanks, Melinda. Oh, my gosh. Susan Moran, our state senator. She's our state senator. She is accessible and she is terrific. She's working on a new bill that's going to help families and children. So I am excited. I am excited for us as her constituents. And I'm also excited for the entire state of Massachusetts to have people like her in our state legislature. We have a great conversation with her. So. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversation.